Wally Aslam. He's a professor of international relations at the University of Bath in the UK. So we've for years been hearing stories about all of the mineral resources there. Doubtless that other countries like China and the US would have loved to work with a functioning Afghan government to help develop. So now that the Taliban are in control, are those resources going to finally be exploited? Well, I would like to think that there will be more attention to uh, mining uh, in Afghanistan in the in the years ahead. One key reason uh, due to which there has not been as much exploitation of Afghanistan's resources in the last 10 years or so is insecurity and issues of law and order. Right. And uh, of course, the Taliban are promising, and we'll see how they deliver on their promises, uh, to bring more stability to this war-torn country. Uh, one more reason due to which these resources have remained untapped is the tribal infighting, and that is also closely related to corruption. And again, the Taliban, again, this is just a promise, but they have promised to uh, clamp down on that as well. So we'll have to see how they deliver on these promises. And as you said in your introduction, um, there are all these resources of cobalt, lithium, and even gold, which remain untapped. And there was an effort in 2007 and 8 onward where China's metallurgical group tried to uh, tap into them, but because of the reasons that I just mentioned, they could not continue the uh, process as smoothly as one would have thought. Right. It's been so dangerous, as well as costly, for other countries to try to get their hands on these resources. So now, as you mentioned, we have the Taliban in power. There are many, many questions as to how competent they will be to run a, a government peacefully, which they, of course, promise. So what are the potential promise, uh, problems with them now being in control of this kind of wealth that remains to be tapped? Well, one key issue is that we should keep an eye on going forward is the uh, differences between the leadership at the top and the leadership at the ground level. Because when you're fighting an enemy, there are more chances to be united. But once you are in power, then the fissures can open and the differences can open. So we need to keep an eye on how the tribal, how, how the local village level committees and groups might uh, disagree with the leadership at the top. And of course, there are chances for that because in the past, they have supported the leadership at the top because they, the leadership at the top promised them security and some kind of livelihood. Uh, and now things have changed, changed drastically. So that is where a key fault line is going forward. And of course, also, as one of our other guests mentioned, the, the poppy industry and the heroin trade has been such a big part of Afghanistan's economy and farmers having to turn to that, knowing that that would be a steady income. What do you foresee happening, happening now in that sector? The, the Taliban don't want to see illicit drugs, but um, you know, remains to be seen if that can be believed. I, what I would like to say is slightly different from the focus on the Taliban. The Taliban are increasingly showing uh, an awareness that they need more legitimacy and recognition from the international community. I think the answer to your question lies in how quickly the international community comes together and builds a consensus, especially among the great powers, uh, to work with the Taliban to bring them into some kind of a fold of an international community where there is a respect for human rights and where there is this clamp down on, as you said, on poppy cultivation and so on. And so the focus will be on the international community as to how quickly uh, they can come on the same platform and try to, uh, the in the first instance, bring some stability and try to work with the Taliban to see how they can exercise control to clamp down on these illegitimate practices as well as they themselves refrain from engaging in them. Sure. Wally, thank you so much.